Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this episode, I'll be teaching you how to make this two-tier ombre cake decorated with edible butterflies. It's a caramel-based cake, so first I'm gonna start off with making my caramel. I have my water and my sugar in a saucepan over medium heat. I'm just dissolving the sugar and letting that come to a boil. After about five to seven minutes, it should look something like this and start to caramelize. Once it's that golden caramel color, you can start adding in the rest of your ingredients and turning off the heat. So add in your brown sugar, stir that in until it's nice and combined. And then what I did is I added in my butter and I let that melt. And I heated my cream in the meantime for about 30 seconds in the microwave. I didn't want it to go in cold, otherwise it'd stiffen up the sugar. And then once you've added in your cream, put it back onto the heat and this will help all the ingredients come together. It might seem like it's not going to at the beginning, but it will, trust me. At this stage, you can let it sit for another three to four minutes, just until it becomes a little bit thicker. You'll find that it bubbles up a lot. But then after three or four minutes, it should coat the back of your spoon like so. When you're at that stage, you can turn off your heat and let those bubbles subside. In the meantime, add in your um, salt, so salted caramel, and I've added in some sea salt here. You can shift that into a heatproof bowl and let that rest in the fridge to cool down. We'll make our cake next. I've got my butter going in the standing mixer at medium speed. Gradually adding in my caster sugar and letting that beat until it's nice and fluffy. I'm gonna add in the vanilla extract, beat that in, and then gradually add in your eggs one at a time on kind of slow speed. Don't add in your next one until the first one's been fully incorporated. Then add in your sour cream, and I'll have the whole recipe in the description box below or a link that leads to it. And then in stages, add in your dry ingredients and your milk. And you can see how quickly I'm sort of alternating between those. And the reason I'm alternating is because it makes for a much fluffier cake because the air in your batter isn't being um, beaten out because there's too much liquid at once, for example. When it reaches that kind of consistency, you can stop there. And if you like, you can add in some of that caramel. If you're going to do so, I would suggest maybe leaving out about a quarter of a cup of sugar because the caramel is very sweet. Transfer that into your cake tins, and I've used a six inch here and a four inch as well. And I put those into an oven at 180 degrees for about um, 40 minutes for my four inch. And it took my six inch about a good hour and 20. So I've just scored a line at the top of the cake just to give myself a bit of a guide to make sure I cut through straight. And I'll do that again. And I'll rotate my turntable as I saw through. That gives you a nice and even um, layer. Adding a little bit of buttercream onto my cake board just to secure my cake to the board. And then here I'm using a piping bag to pipe on some buttercream. I kind of decided halfway through actually I want to use my spatula, but I think it would have been a lot neater um, in hindsight if I had used the piping bag and just the piping bag. It was a bit too thin for me, so I added just another layer of buttercream. It also makes for a bit of a taller cake when you add a bit more buttercream in the center. Then I'm going in with my caramel that I've put into a makeshift piping bag. A generous amount of that and then put on your second layer and follow the exact same steps. Here again I popped on my buttercream and then I used my spatula to even it out. And the more even and the flatter your buttercream, the uh, straighter your cake will be as well. And attach your bottom layer at the top so that the smooth side is facing up. And then using your spatula, just uh, take away any excess buttercream at the sides. And I put that into the freezer. Working on my four inch cake here, I'm doing the exact same thing, only this time I didn't use the spatula. And again, remove any excess buttercream on the sides and then place that onto a separate cake board with some buttercream and that'll secure it and help us to decorate it later. That way it doesn't move around. I put that into the freezer. Now I'm working on my six inch cake here and I'm adding a little bit of buttercream to the top and the sides just to create a crumb coat. That'll stop any crumbs from getting into our final layer of buttercream. And then smooth off the sides as well. So you have a nice clean top. I'll be using gold and avocado for um, coloring my buttercream. It's a gel food color by Americolor. I've got a really dark version of the avocado here. And using a round tip, I'm just sort of going around the bottom of the cake. And because it is the bottom of the cake, you could add a little bit extra um, 
just in those crevices and it won't affect your end look of the cake. And then to create a lighter shade, I put the excess I was in lag into a cup, added a bit more of my buttercream that's uncolored and made that a lighter avocado color. And you'll be doing this all the way up the cake just to create that nice um, ombre. Here I've added a bit more buttercream and now that it's too pale, I've added a little bit of that gold, just enough to um, shade it uh, in a different color so you can tell between the last layer and this layer that I'm doing now. So you don't want to add too much, just enough to be able to see a difference in colors. I've added extra on the top as well and this way I can close off the cake with that color of buttercream. And smooth off the top and then using a bench scraper to smooth down the sides as well. Go all the way around until most of those crevices have gone, all those little holes in the side of the cake. Then using a frosting comb with the larger teeth, I'm making sure to work very slowly here because I want it to remain as even as possible and digging those teeth into the side of the cake. Not too much that reveals the cake underneath, just enough to leave an imprint. And I'll clean off the top and I'll put that back into the freezer to set a bit. So I've taken out my four inch, I've crumb coated it as well and I'm starting off with that light gold, adding in a bit more of the gel food color to make it a bit darker each time and now I'm going in with the terracotta color. Again, I just added a little teensy weensy bit into that gold and then added extra terracotta to make it a bit darker. And that's how I achieved that ombre look there. So smooth off the top, just like the other cake using a bench scraper and just scraping off the excess. Once you're happy with the smoothness of the sides of the cake, you can take that uh, frosting comb, dig it in slightly and go around the cake. Try to do this in one smooth motion, it makes for a much neater look as well. Tidy off the top and then we'll start assembling our cake. So I've got some very large straws here and I'm pushing it all the way down making sure it's touched the bottom of the cake, marked it with an edible marker and then snipping off where that mark was. And I add three every time in a triangular kind of formation. Cake has been resting in the freezer so I can handle it with my hands. Just release it from the cake board and position it on top however you like. You can adjust it so it's centered. And next I'm gonna add on my edible butterflies. And I printed these onto wafer paper and I made sure to cut out a couple of different sizes because I think it looks a lot nicer that way. I've started off with my orange I'm transitioning into my yellow and then at the very top I'll transition into my green. And these edible butterflies stick onto buttercream really easily, even though this has been in the freezer. As long as you kind of press it into the buttercream, she'll stick really easily. If you're paranoid about it not sticking or falling off, then I would recommend adding some water. Uh, not very much because water tends to um, warp your butterflies, so water or edible glue will do the job. To make a two-tier ombre cake with edible butterflies. These butterflies are just images that I found on Google but I'll leave a link to where I found them on Google in the description box below. Another thing I might mention when arranging butterflies on a cake is I found this to trial and error. It looks a lot nicer when you have them all kind of leading in the one direction so you wouldn't have one kind of facing this way and then another one kind of facing that way. You'd want them all to be kind of uniform in the direction that they're traveling. And another thing is, I don't like, personal, personal opinion, I don't like the way large butterflies look on a cake. I like them to be different sized and also much smaller so you can arrange a lot more of them. I did a previous cake that I recorded and I didn't put up because I was not happy with it at all. But basically, I use much larger butterflies and it just looked terrible. In fact, I will show you how terrible. I made this guy a couple of weeks ago with a um, butterfly punch that I had at home. This guy here. I don't know, it's just the bigger butterflies look terrible. When you compare it to the small butterflies all leading in one direction, you can kind of fit a lot more, there's a lot more detail. It just looks a lot nicer. And that's the beauty about cake decorating. It's all trial and error. No one's perfect. You won't get it perfect on the first go, likely. And it's just a matter of learning what you did previously that didn't work and then just refining it. So don't give up, guys. Cake decorating is an art form. You develop it. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. And I will catch you next time.